some of the latest developments in assisted reproductive technology. Truly, today, we leave almost no couple behind. And to shed more light on a topic that so many have shied away from, we have with us a very special guest this afternoon. She's a proud recipient of the Padma Shri and medical director of Mill and the Fertility Center, New Delhi. Please join me in welcoming none other than... The introduction was good, and so let's just have a look at it. Spectrum of fertility, conception rates, and fecundability. If you look at 16 to 20 percent chances of conceiving per month in the first three months, 85 percent will conceive within a year. Now, if you look at the normal to subfertility and infertility, this is a spectrum in the male and the female. So, prevalence we know, total population of India, one. Uh, 0.21 billion, and uh, you find women in this population about 586 million. Married women in the age group of 20 to 44 years is almost 202 to 220 million. And if you were to estimate infertile couples, about 20 to 33 million. So if you look at total women, this is what we're going to have. Look at the infertile couples there. 10 to 15 percent of couples in India are suffering from infertility. So if you had to look at it with the all India population as versus rural and urban, you'll find that the amount of infertility in the urban population is more. Again, this slide was already put up earlier, but it's just to say that where are the uh, high kind of infertility populations and that's what we can ad address, particularly for the industry. And you look at the total fertility rate, they're all decreasing, whether it is Haryana or Karnataka, you're finding that what was in Uttar Pradesh at 2.95, is the trend is that it is coming down. And if you look at working women, you have only 1.2% working women, and tobacco use, you'll see is 16.9%. So this kind of uh, data is quite mind-boggling. And the other one that you look at, if you look at here, Delhi, the total fertility rate is 1.8, and Karnataka is 1.89. But if you look at working women, you will see that the working women, it's, even though Karnataka is considered to be very forward, it's only 2.3%, but the trend is increasing. You look at the tobacco use. So if you're looking here, 16.3%. So how often do we ask people whether they are you know, alcohol abuse or tobacco abuse, and this is something that we must look at very carefully. So, racial and ethnic factors. Indian women have an earlier onset and a decline in the antral follicular counts, nearly 6.3 years earlier than our Spanish cohort. AFCs in the Indian women was lower by a factor of 2.3 times compared with the Spanish cohort. Faster decline of AMH in Indian women Indian women have lower live birth rates compared to our Caucasian counterparts. So the trends of infertility and childlessness in India, the findings from the National Family Health Survey data, you will see that when they defined infertility as primary infertility for women between 20 to 49 years group in India who are currently married for more than five years. So that particular five years was the definition they used, currently not pregnant, having not terminated pregnancy and never used contraceptives. But our clinical studies often use one year period of exposure, and it is common demographic studies to use a period of five years. So there's a slight difference in the definition that is used. So the study does not provide estimates for infertility. Now look at the risk factors and risk of infertility in women. So rural versus urban, the influence is a higher prevalence of urban women compared to rural women. The religion, higher rates among Christians, Muslims have a lower rate of infertility. Education, higher levels, uh, when the education is high also, you'll find higher levels of infertility with higher educated women compared to the lower educated. Mass media exposure, infertility rates are higher in those exposed to mass media. And standard of living, high infertility rates in women with poor standard of living. Employment, working women again have a higher prevalence of infertility. Other risk factors in women, the PCOS, the endometrial TB, obesity, alcohol consumption. <clears throat> this is increased in infertility associated with increased alcohol intake. Tobacco is something that we all have to concentrate on. There's an increased risk of infertility associated with increased tobacco. 
the STI is also an important factor. So look at this diagnosis before ART. Male factor would form something like about 32.6%. And if you look at, uh, we would say, uh, you know, roughly about 50-50 male and female. But the rest of the thing comes in this multiple male and female factors, which is a 17.1%, and multiple female factors of 12.1%, uterine factor of about 6.2%. Diagnosis in patients with infertility is the Indian burden. So if you look at male factor, again, if you divide this, diminished ovarian reserve accounts for almost 8.1%. And if you look at multiple factors, and uterine factor here would be 1.6%. What is the market size and opportunities that we see here? 27.5 million infertile couples in India. 1% of infertile couples, uh, this is the population of infertility. 1% of infertile couples is 270,000. And if you look at couples prescribed IVF treatment is only 65,000. And the number of cycles being done in India today as an estimate is about a lakh. So what has been the basis of this kind of uh, data? 10 to 15% prevalence of infertility, 20, 25% of total couples registering to an infertility clinic undergo IVF. So one in four goes up through IVF. The risk, this represents only 1% of the total infertile couples seeking infertility. So the market is huge. The penetration has not been that good. And assuming that 1.5 IVF cycles per couple. So estimates of a market size based on primary interviews with uh, key opinion leaders, pharmaceutical companies, and clinicians, this is where you got the 1 lakh cycles. Now, distribution of IVF cycles across India, if you see that the total number of IVF cycles which is the unorganized sector and which is the organized sector? As of now, we see 75% of the 500 clinics are in the organized sector, which is in the yellow, and 25%, which is another 500 clinics, is in the unorganized sector. So if you look at the geographical distribution, you have south, west, and central occupying almost 60% of the IVF clinics, and the north as well as the east has a, a good potential for getting more cycles put in. Again, the state-wise distribution of the number of IVF cycles performed, you'll have a look at it. If you look at Maharashtra as well as Gujarat, you have a fairly high population of IVFs being done. If you come to Karnataka, it would be just about 6,200. So annual number of IVFs, if you look at, you'll see this is where we stand. The market is in key Indian metros, based on the number of IVF cycles per annum, you look at Delhi, uh, tops it, and then you go through Ahmedabad, then uh, to Mumbai and Ahmedabad, then Chennai, Kolkata, Hyderabad, then Bangalore. So therefore, there's a huge potential as we actually look at this data. So if you look at India performs one lakh IVF cycles annually, with a significant concentration of IVF cycles being performed in metros, we need to understand that if we go beyond metros and we go into the tier two and three cities, is going to be a virgin territory for the industry. So if you look at this, the IVF and the affordability. Now, the MPA is millions per annum. If you see the households that can afford the treatment and the cost of infertility being anywhere between 1.5 to 2 lakhs, you know that is a very small proportion that can actually afford infertility. That means only 21% of total households in India can afford infertility treatment. So patient awareness and credibility of fertility centers, very important. Numbers of years trying, our survey of patients and responses here was that many of them are trying between five to six years, that is almost 33%, and there are at least almost 14% over eight years. Current status of having a baby trying to conceive normally, 13%, and 84% have been visiting gynecologists for this but they continue to visit gynecologists and a large proportion of inter infertile patients are actually locked up with the gynecologists who continue doing IUIs and timed intercourse and that's where it actually gets locked up. And the important thing is visiting a general practitioner has not been much, but nevertheless, 3%. So if you look at the patient knowledge on infertility and its causes, age at infertility starts. So stress, age of woman, working couples and age of men, these are the things which are very important. So stress and all these things are considered valid reasons for fertility problems. Now if you look at the blue, it just shows that 
those people, in, that means in, in the blue area, is that this, there is some amount of awareness in all these people. Age at which fertility problems start, 25 to 30 years, 10%. 35 to 40 years, 70% of the ones that come in. And no idea is again 20%. So everybody was found to be aware of IVF, while only 90% were aware of IUI. For surrogacy, donor eggs and donor uh, sperm, spontaneous recall is near nil, while on uh, aiding most uh, or sort of sub, um, you know, the counseling them, they were aware. Amongst aware prospects, two thirds mentioned that these alternatives are not acceptable, while the rest of the mentioned that they could consider nearly nil was ready to accept. So therefore, it is important of spontaneous awareness in IVF. They say all of them are aware. IUI 79%, surrogacy 6%, and of course, donor egg is 5%, donor sperm is 4%. Surrogacy here, as well as donors, this is the same thing, acceptability options. Now, understanding the success rate. This is very, very important. 91 to 100% felt that 56% is the chances for pregnancy, for success rates. So therefore, this is something that you have to keep in mind. Time willing to spend for treatment, one to three months and four to six months is what they would expect, or even up to seven to nine months. So this is important. Very few people wanted to spend you know, 10 months and over in an infertility clinic. So influ influences for decision making, if you look at, referral from a gynecologist would be around 90. Internet and websites is about 11. 21% is family. Internet health related, 11%. Again, friends, other couples, referral from other doctors. So therefore, it is important for us to understand that a lot can be done in this area. Expectations of patients. Experience of the doctors, time spent by the senior doctor, flexible hours like evening time, homely atmosphere, personalized treatment, these are the five you know, um, uh, parameters that patients are expecting from an infertility clinic. So these are the key drivers for choice. So what about the role of gynecologists in art? If you look at influencers here, referral from the gynecologist, we've already spoken about this, so we'll go to the next slide. In India, low awareness but high demand and value. Why? Because of these social problems. Need for parenthood, Importance of having children is greatest in India and lowest in Japan. Social status of parenthood is more influential in India than in China, but is less valued in countries with a high level of economic development. Awareness of infertility problems is lowest in India compared to other countries. So what is the gray area? The gray area just tells you that increasing awareness of infertility is a key imperative in India as many couples do not suspect a potential problem when in fact they should have already been seeking treatment which further reduces their chance of conceiving because of the age. So look at the making of infertility specialists in India and it's a very important slide. Basic qualifications of MD, gynae, DNB or DGO, formal training in infertility is very little. The courses like MCH in reproductive medicine, there's a, uh, from the university, that is from the Medical Council of India, it's a duration of three years post MD. FNB in reproductive medicine, two years, national board of exams. And of course, we have the FRM from state level universities, which is anywhere between 1.5 years and one year. In institutional fellowship programs of fertility centers can come up to one year. And then short programs in fertility centers. And this is something which is you know, done by vendors, industry, short training courses outside India, one week to three months. So this is a varied kind of training program which needs to be standardized. So, look at the infertility specialist listed on a popular aggregator. Anyone who's an MD obstetrics and gynecology considers themselves to be an infertility specialist. That is wrong. So 46% of that. Those who have done DGO or DNB, again you have an 18%. And then three months of short-term courses, mind you, 18% of them consider to this call themselves as infertility specialists, which is something that you should be caref uh, careful about. And those who have done FNB, for example, is only 9%. That means we need to increase the FNB. We need to get much more specialists in. 
And there are people who have done MRCOG, which is roughly another 9%, who all consider themselves to be infertility specialists because this is a subspecialty. It needs more training. So training in infertility as a specialty is still lacking. And therefore, if you have 25,000 gynecologists today, 7 to 10,000 gynecologists will be in the infertility practice. So 700 to 1,000 gynecologists performing IVF procedures, 20 to 25 gynecologists receive a fellowship in reproductive medicine every year from the National Board of Exams. So from a 25,000, you've got a mere 700 to 1,000, which means this, this is an unmet need in the population today. Yearly output of embryologists, MSc embryology, postgraduate diploma, and clinical embryology, 15 to 20%. So you'll have about MSc in clinical embryology, another 10 to 15 would come out. So what are the challenges for growth today? Improving key outcomes would be institution of a regulatory framework at a national level for monitoring and surveillance of ART procedures, priority number one. This, and then to expand the care, training and skill building of ART personnel, IVF specialists, embryologists, and gynecologists to improve treatment delivery and outcomes, improving financing options for ART through expansion of government and private insurance schemes to include infertility treatment, and of course, adopt, adoption of innovative IVF treatments to reduce costs of treatment. What about building patient confidence? National education programs for increasing awareness of the population regarding infertility, cause prevention and treatment, and inclusion of infertility prevention in the national reproductive care program and increasing awareness about the cause of infertility. So key action points that one needs to look at, passing the ART bill, which I'm sure with the help of the media, we will be able to sensitize the government that this is a very important issue and it has to be passed if you want to regulate the unregulated centers. National level accreditation programs like the NABH should also look at the IVF centers and make sure that they are also up to standard. Minimum level of standards of infrastructure, standardized reporting of results and outcomes, cover in uh, fertility treatment under the insurance programs and the healthcare programs, low cost programs, programs for patients with poor ovarian reserve, extremely important, and technology to reduce the cost and to improve the outcome. So look at all the disruptive technologies and expectations. Time-lapse embryoscope improves embryo selection and improves time to pregnancy. PGD improves embryo selection. Automation in embryology improved outcome, reduced cost of skilled manpower. Invo cell in body incubator, reduction in cost of IVF. Or uh, they saying artificial intelligence based semen parameter uh, the analysis reduces cost and easy diagnosis. And of course, personalized ovarian stimulation reduces complications. So what about the legal framework and the regulation of ART in India? See, no legal registration is required as of now for ART clinics and banks currently. Hence, the compliance of ART banks with best practices are at best circumspect. So surrogacy maintaining confidentiality, monitoring the surrogates at surrogate homes, for cross-border surrogacy, there are problems related to legal political citizenship of children born of these procedures, and there is no provision of counseling and psychological screening for surrogate mothers. It is an unorganized sector, needs to come under the purview of protocol. Gamete and embryo handling, no regulatory guidelines or laws concerning management of embryo banks. We have guidelines, but we do not have a law yet. Until we have a law and it is made mandatory, we cannot tell people to follow it. Unethical use of donor embryos and sperm and oocytes has to be curbed. Lack of compliance and monitoring mechanisms to check malpractices at ART banks and clinics. No regulatory laws or guidelines concerning the number of embryos transferred. Often multiple embryos are transferred resulting in multiple births and risking the life of mother. Prenatal diagnosis of gender of the baby by PGD is also something that you have to keep in mind. So ban on surrogacy and changes in the legal framework ongoing, policies driven by more activism rather than social needs. So activism should not actually drive policies. This is what we have. Recently, I saw in the Facebook a 60-year-old 60, 60 woman who delivered 
And then I found a whole lot of my colleagues, you know, congratulating the doctor and saying that, uh, you know, it's great, it's great. Imagine a woman at 60 having a baby. What is the fate of that child? I mean, are we really doing justice? And when the legal framework comes in, then those sort of things will not happen. So no legal registration is required for the banks currently, ART banks, and hence compliance of the banks is also uh, to something to be looked at. So minimum standards of quality and accreditation are not mandatory in India currently. So if the framework is put in, I think all these things will get settled. So thank you all very much.